So for this Sandbox episode, we're excited to talk to somebody who is a regular on the show, a good, good friend, but we typically only get to talk to him for about 10 minutes at a time. So we decided it's been long enough. Let's give him a full episode. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You know him, you love him, Mr. Tom Whalen. Oh, guys, you're too Hello. kind. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it has Tom, been a while, hasn't it? It's been, it's been too long. Like some would say, uh, hey, where's Tom at? And then we, <laughs> and then we would say, uh, yeah, he's he's around. Let's let's talk to him more. I got um, that. Uh, somebody asked me at New York Comic Con, "Are you still doing that?" I said, "Yeah, I think so." I said, "I think they're restructuring." So here we are. This is the official relaunch of. Uh, and this is your first time on since we've shifted to the video format. Yes. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, the the people watching in YouTube land don't get to see your face right oh, now. That's but, fortunate. Uh, that's very fortunate for them. <laughs> um, but uh, as as it, sh it should go stated that uh, we are without one of our members right now. Um, and so we don't want to just leave that out. We know Luke is not here uh, for this episode. He's still traveling back. We just got back from... Uh, from California Imagine and Pixar and yeah. Disney. And it's been a whirlwind of a trip. And uh, we just got back a couple hours ago. Patrick's staying with me for a whoa, few days. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can touch you right now. Yep. <laughs> Everything is different. Normally, like, we're in, like, different frames, but we are together. Yeah, it kind of freaked me out weird. when you just did that, though. I'm like, wait, what oh. did I forget? Okay, so I, there are still boundaries. I apologize. Yeah, still boundaries. Let's still pretend like we're not in the Emma same Emma Boyne doesn't have an HR person yet, so yeah. I, I think I'm still in the clear. But. I'm hoping that Tom is going to mediate that for us. <laughs> it is a um, touchy time to be doing this stuff, guys. <laughs> it is a very delicate matter. Very these delicate. These days, yeah. Um... So we're anyway, so Luke is, is still traveling, so uh, he's with us in spirit and in our hearts. But uh, as for now, uh, Patrick and I will, will kind of steer the ship for a little bit. Um, so, Tom, tell everybody what you've been up to uh, over the past, oh gosh, how long has it been since we've had you on uh, for a full episode? It's oh, been a it's bit. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, yeah, I don't so even know. So tell everybody what's been, what's been going on in, in, in Waylon world. Uh, so just reaching back a few months, uh, I've had a show, a two-man show with Dave Perillo at uh, Gallery 1988 uh, called Alphabets, where we each took the full alphabet. I did uppercase, he did lowercase. Um, we did pop culture, had some fun pop culture um, letter form uh, mini prints that we did. Um, so 52 prints in all in that show. Um, I did New York Comic Con, where I had a few exclusives. And, yeah, uh, how did Comic Con go for you? It's, I was watching your feed and, and seeing you were doing some kind of fun um, giveaways and stuff. Uh, yeah, with the, there's a thing at New York Comic Con where uh, it's, an, it's a phenomenon. We've done it for four years now. And uh, somehow there's a Chinese restaurant that comes around and throws menus on your table during the day to get you to order because they know you're stuck there. So they throw these menus on your table, but you never see the guy who throws them on the table. It's just, you turn around and the, and the menu is there. So after two or three days of throwing, like frustratedly throwing these on the floor, Dave's like, why don't you draw a Samurai Jack on that? <laughs> so, uh, it's a, it's a thin connective tissue between Samurai Jack and a Chinese menu, but somehow it kind of makes sense. So I did that. And, uh, Gave it away to the first person. You still that, don't know who the guy is. No, it, well, I mean, I could track him down because it's from obviously he's hired by the restaurant, um, by right, the like, Chinese restaurant. So, okay, so it wasn't like this like mystery of like how do these no, show up? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. You don't. You don't go to your hotel room and like pull up, like pull back the bed sheet, and there's like a no, Chinese menu no, like tucked in. No. It feels that way after a few days of these <laughs> menus showing up, but I'm sure it's somebody with a bag, and they just they're throwing these out to kind of guerrilla advertising. But uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. We uh, and, we, and we had you're some out fun there, with it. you're working hard all day, and they're just saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna make this easy for you." Are there are there specials on there and stuff too? No, like if you it's bring just a flag? regular everyday Chinese menu. Ah, uh, they're missing an opportunity for marketing. Yeah, Let's get a totally. hold of them so we can help their marketing team. Totally. So we had some fun with with that. And Dave had a uh, Krispy Kreme donut hat that he drew Homer Simpson on. So we were just kind of doing some freebie fun giveaways that we could play with on uh, Instagram and Twitter. So one of the things that strikes me when I see the, the work that you do, first of all, it's super prolific and we'll get into some of the other stuff. Cause like as of record date, 
some stuff dropped today. Yeah, this um, is a big week for uh, yeah. reveals. Um, and uh, so we'll get to that stuff. But it strikes me that you, and we say this regularly, like you're super prolific, but it seems like you never stop. Like you're never not putting pixel to paper or however it is that you would say <laughs> that. Because you're a digital designer who does prints, right? So that actually makes sense, pixel yeah. to paper. No, that makes total sense. Yeah, I, um, I said it to someone at... Someone mentioned that to me at New York, and I said, I've heard someone say you can run faster when you're scared, and uh, <laughs> I, I really think that's true. I, I just don't, I don't ever take this for granted, this um, uh, support I have and the amount of jobs I have coming in, so I just, I kind of, uh, and, and the responsibility of keeping a family afloat, um, I, I, I don't ever feel content um, taking time off, even, even if it's sketching on a day off or, um, sketching on a plane or, or whatever it may be. I, I, I just, I feel more comfortable if I'm producing. I like something. that phrase. Good. No. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at me like you needed like approval or affirmation for yeah. that. Again, this is a weird experience. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Did you and did uh, did you and your son have any pieces at Comic Con? No, we didn't. But we said, uh, and a few people were asking. But I we I, I've talked to him. He he has some stuff cooking that I have to kind of um, <laughs> <laughs> art direct. Not not I don't even want to say art direct. Um, creative direct, maybe maybe on a bigger level. Not the actual artwork, but the his ideas that he he has some stuff he wants to uh, he okay. wants to do together. So. Um, he, he, we're, we're about to for a new I'm trying to decipher what that means. Well, he, yeah. he, he's drawing the uh, 18 by 24 picture of the abomination on, on, in colored pencil, which is awesome, but he wants to sell prints of it. And I, I was telling him that it might be a tough sell. It might be, he might do better if he does smaller prints of multiple characters. So, As opposed to jumping up to 18 by to 24. One character, 18 by 24. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to steer him into something that's going to work for him. So and it's great. Of, I'm, I can't wait to show it, but uh, he, he's been working on it for a while. Speaking of like sizes, because this is something that we were talking about today. I got back from, uh, we got back from California to literally a table full of prints that came uh, sure. into, yeah, that had came in while I was gone. And, um, they are all 18 by 24 or smaller. Um, and I think one is like 16 by 20 and then the other ones are 18 by 24. Um, and we were talking about how, about that size idea. And last time that, uh, uh, we chatted with you or maybe two times ago, we chatted with you. We talked about the fact that when you do stuff with Mondo, you're, you're, or really anywhere, you're, you're spitting stuff out, um, at, 24 by 36, like all of your licensed stuff you're spitting out at that. And then it seems like when you do all your personal stuff, you spit them out as small squares. So they're either like nine inch by nine inch or 24 by 36. Like what's the dichotomy between those things? My, my rule is that I try to do feature films and um, feature animation at 24 by 36 and TV related properties at 18 by 24 or okay. 12, or 12 by 36 um which is not something that i started out doing when i was doing uh my first few pixars well actually just monsters incorporated i did 18 by 24 um i just feel like the bigger it is if, if it's like a, a movie poster it should have the movie poster size and impact um but in light of all of that wall space so to speak that I put out, I, I do try to keep like the gallery shows, like the gallery 1988 stuff smaller. I found that the, the busts that I've been doing and the alphabet stuff, uh, people respond to the smaller bite size, um, stuff for those shows. So I, I try to, I try to give people a break from, from all the big stuff. Sure. Even if there isn't a huge difference in price point, because normally we're talking about like I mean, sometimes only a difference of maybe ten bucks or something like that. But I know for me, I would I would rather uh, kind of be able to get more prints in a smaller amount of space on my wall, right? Like I have yeah. a limited amount of space, and you know, it's like I'm looking behind us at Andrew's wall, and he can only fit four prints right. in a row, right? Um, 
And yeah, so, and no, I mean, I, I think everything you got in, like you said, was small. And, and I like that trend. I hope we see more of that of people sticking to uh, smaller sizes. Yeah, I, um, it's funny because I, I actually just broke my feature film rule for something that's coming up probably later this year. But um, I, I think the, the smaller stuff and it's the, the smaller stuff that the shows moves well. It's, it's almost it becomes more bite sized than the commitment of putting a 24 by 36 on the wall. Yeah, absolutely. Have you, um, and this is this is just a quick question. I haven't done my research. Probably should have. Have you done stuff with Hero Complex Gallery? No, I haven't. Okay. So we've talked a lot about Mondo. We are all, you know, obviously we're well acquainted with them, and, and they've been great to us when we come out. But when we were in... Um, when we were in California, Adam Smasher, who is the, the gallery owner and curator, uh, invited us out. They were doing their Thor Ragnarok, um, like, premiere. Yes. Uh, like, gallery sh- opening for the, the, the official, you know. Uh, it, was, it was Hero Complex, Marvel, and Fandango all together. Um, holy cow, man. If you've not been out there, they put on a party. Like I know they, those guys. I'm I've uh, met them before, and we hang out with them at New York because they come out in yeah in mass. It's crazy, man. Uh, like if you ever get a chance to go to one of their one of their uh, gallery openings, uh, they know how to they know how to turn it up to eleven. That's all I have to say about yeah, that. Yeah, that's so. what I've heard. I've never been to their actual gallery, but uh, I, I've definitely heard that. All right, I want to talk MondoCon. I yes. think that, I mean that's what we're staring at right now. I mean we're we're sitting here, um, I guess when this airs, a couple it's, days away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When this airs, it'll be tomorrow. Right. It's Friday, Saturday. Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be two days, days away. So uh, we've seen one of your pieces. So I, I don't know if Collider or who had the exclusive. Yeah, I, I think, think that's, that's who did I saw it. it. Yeah. And uh, but we saw your Snow White piece, mm-hmm. and uh, which is just. It, just awesome. I mean, we we have several friends that are in the community. Um, Jay Ratner specifically, huge Snow White fan. So as soon as we saw that piece, we're immediately like, you know, like texting <laughs> him, him, trying yep. to show it off and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I mean, I would love to hear you maybe uh, talk about that piece, but I'd, I'm not sure if you can tease maybe how many prints you have coming out or, or, or what else we can expect from you at MondoCon this year. To be honest, that's the... That might be the only one that that's going to be released uh, from me at Mondo, at this MondoCon. Um, that's Snow White's a w- one that I've been had on the short list for a while, and um, I never had a definitive idea for it. I just knew it was going to be a lot of work to render all those characters. Um, and finally, I think this seemed like the right time to. Uh, it was a good release spot for it um, after the. Uh, recent Mondo Disney show. I wanted to do another classic uh, property and uh, it just seemed like the right, w- right one to carve out a little bit extra time to render all the uh, characters. So. Uh, so, uh, so the way that you worded that uh, makes me curious. Do they, you know, they have like, so it's in conjunction with Cyclops. Sure. Uh, again, so it's Mondo and Cyclops. Do, do you have just kind of, free reign and open season on all their license, like all the Disney license stuff. Cause it sounds like you kind of had this in the back of your mind and you wanted to work on it, but, but you decided that now would be the good time to do it. Like that, like how does that process work? Because I, I know that's not the case for every artist, but like, how does that work? They, um, I, I typically, and I just did this with them recently. I'll send them a wish list of my top, top Pixar, top, Disney and I think I put top Disney shorts at this uh, on this last one and um, we just kind of work through that after you know once they look at the list they we kind of say this one would fit here this one would fit here let's we have a show coming up that this one would fit Um, so Snow White has been uh, on the I want to do another princess movie um, because I feel like I haven't really gone through all those classic Cinderella uh, Sleeping Beauty Snow White um catalog yet and this it just felt like that was it was time to do this so i'm this is maybe a bit of a larger question um we we so your pieces don't maybe have the level of like um fine detail or line work is like maybe i'm thinking of someone like daniel danger or something like that where you have like really dense like a lot of line work right i'm curious when you're working through stuff if you 
Uh, certainly you have details and embellishments, but do you have to like tell yourself to put on the brakes at times because it's like pushing too far into that's, something? That is a great question because I, that's something I uh, pay a, a whole lot of attention to. Um, but I don't, I try to keep them evenly detailed, if that makes sense. Like I try to keep the character, I try to keep a uniformity across a piece and across Across the whole line of Disney stuff, I try to keep a uniformity. Um, so I don't, you're right, like Daniel Danger and Laurent and um, try, so many of the Mondo artists, um, uh, Richie, Richie Beckett, and Ke- oh my God, Kevin, that uh, Pixies poster he did is so insane. Um, this is just for the audience seeing this is the Snow White piece we've been talking about. Yeah, I um. I definitely try to keep an even tone and even some stuff I'm working on now that's non Disney stuff. It's a, I try to keep things evenly detailed if that makes sense. Right. Like I don't, sure. I, I, it's I, things look very off to me when there's too much detail in one, one corner of a, of a poster or a composition. So it's definitely a concern. I feel like I have the level of detail that works for the Disney posters kind of in my head, what I want to, what I want to achieve. This one's happened to be a, a lot of colors, so they're that expanded on this just to be able to get all the the vivid images in there. But um. it's amazing. I mean, like when we when we saw it today, I mean, we just we all just kind of gasped and looked at it because of the colors. I have a question about composition. Um, a lot of people would think that doing a print for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, you would focus on either. Uh, Snow White or the Seven Dwarves, and they almost you, the the way that you've balanced the piece. It almost seems like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves become one character and one focus, and the other half of the poster becomes uh, the evil witch or whatever her name is, the 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 villain. And it seems like you've almost balanced this out as kind of like a a one and one. What was the like how many revisions or how many concepts did you go through to get to this? And then why this as the, the, like the, the final composition? Um, it's funny you mention that because this one, I certain posters, I'm not sure if they work better in portrait or landscape. And this one went back and forth about two or three times, uh, during layout. So I had it as a vertical layout for a while. And then I'll just, I'll rotate this, the, the, everything on screen or I, I'll rotate my frame on the screen and work it, try to see what composition works best. And it, the first composition didn't work because, um, I, I don't think the queen was played up properly and as large as she should have been. Okay. And this just seemed, it seems like it reads left to right. It kind of flows into her and into the apple. So that it, it just kind of visually flowed better in landscape. And, um, there's those, I knew the, the dwarves would have to be overlapped and kind of bunched together just cause there's so much information in them. Um, so they kind of did become a unit. You know, this becomes a great opportunity for me to share a fun piece of trivia. So on our trip, we got to go <laughs> to the, uh, the Walt Disney, uh, family museum yep. and, uh, they have this, and by the way, anybody that hasn't gone awesome exhibits, the, they're all so, so well done, and, and wouldn't you know, they they do a great job at telling a story uh, as you walk through. But in one of the places, you can sit down, and, and there's this, like, it's basically like a big tablet you interact with, and it talks about, like, um, kind of working with Walt and some of that. And, and they talk, they spend a lot of time talking about Snow White, um, you know, in all these little videos and excerpts. And one of the things they said, which I thought was super cool, is that... Um, Walt thought it, he, he really wanted to make sure that they kind of uh, upped, I'm calling it fun factor. He had another phrase, but like he wanted to make sure there were lots of little like um, jokes or um, like unique uh, character embellishments and, and whatnot. So for all his animators, he encouraged them to, to throw as many like embellishments and jokes and all that as they could as they could at he the... Call, he called them gags. Gags, right. And he said for every gag that made it into the final film, uh, the animator got $5. <laughs> and that was his way of, like, boosting uh, the, the overall feeling of the, the movie, which I thought was awesome. That is fantastic. 
Um, okay, so we're pulling up an, the other piece, which I think that... Uh, so this, was this announced today or that yesterday? Was, that was announced yesterday and goes on sale tomorrow, which is Friday, which is in Perfect. the past when this will air, so... So it's it's gone. Time Sorry, travel. Guys. It's gone. <laughs> Time travel. It's, it's okay because I can't even get it to focus. But what, what like we're looking at is we're looking at Sesame Street. So this is um, you and um, Dark Hall Mansion. Dark Hall Mansion. Yep. Uh, this one's been cooking for a long time. Man, um, I, I would say we probably Just started. Failing. We may have started that maybe five or six months ago. Uh huh. And it's just uh, just took that long to get all the pieces in place and and get it together. But I am that was a huge um wish list thing for me did um, you watch sesame street growing oh up? yeah yeah okay so this is and, and i does, does your kid like is that something that continues no it's it's funny because my son watched it for a little while and uh my daughter has very little uh connection to it but um for me it was it's probably more important to me than to my kids but i know a lot of kids yeah. still still really bond with it it's it's insanely good uh, beyond just you know the uh, us loving your work, but you you specifically what you do, one hundred percent are the right person to do this property. Like it absolutely matches what you do and the way that you've managed. I, if I I wish that the stupid camera would focus on it um, because what you've managed. Oh, there we go. What you've managed to do with the characters and the composition. Um, is, I mean, nothing short than like amazing. And it captures that real sense of nostalgia for people who did watch this growing up. Um, because it's fun, it's bright and it, it has the old characters and the new. Right. Um, and it's, yeah, that was a big part of what we wanted to do is kind of bridge the gap between old and new that would, it would play to both the kids now and, and the kids that grew up with it. Which character do you most identify with? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Big Bird. He was always okay. my guy. And why? I always, I always felt like you could relate to Big Bird. He, no judgment, and I feel like he was... He was the, he, the innocence that uh, Carol Spinney portrayed him with just um resonated with me as a kid i just felt comfortable with him oscar always made me uncomfortable but <laughs> it, like in a in a fun way you know not like scared but i always felt like anxious <laughs> just the way he would treat people um in hindsight i love him and cookie monster was too much of a too like wild too unfocused for me I was always a Grover guy. Like for me, uh, he just he captures kind of the the imaginative. Grover, real. really? Yeah, Grover. I did not like. I think Grover is actually my my least liked character. Oh my gosh! I think one of my one of my I wouldn't say my favorite books, but one of the books that I remember most growing up is that book called The Monster at the End of the Book. Have you? Do you remember that? No, that no. Like golden book or whatever. It's it's a Sesame Street book about Grover, and he's scared throughout the entire book because he heard that there's a monster at the end of the book, and so <laughs> he's afraid to turn the page, and he builds this like brick wall to to keep from being able yeah. to turn the page, and he 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 uh, solicits you as the reader to not turn the page, and then at the end of the book he realizes, oh, I'm the monster that's been in the book oh, this whole time. There's yeah, nothing do, that for me. That does ring a bell. Of. Now that you it's mention great. it. It's a great book, but I just loved how he, you know, Super Grover, and he reminds me a lot of Gonzo. He's he's the Gonzo character. He really uh, is, yeah. Yeah, and that, for me, was always Gonzo uh, connected most with me. So you've, you've crossed this now off of your list of, of so, a property you wanted to work with. You've crossed Snow White off the list, both very iconic. Yeah, um, it's funny that they were both debuted the same, like, day a day apart. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I usually he, don't find that stuff out until the day of. Or the day before. you When someone texts you and says, hey, I just saw this. <laughs> yeah, right. Or like, hey, can I get on your list for this one? Or, um, yeah, when it kind of shows up. Yeah. I mean, Mond Mondo gave me a heads up. I know they're scheduling um, a lot of stuff for MondoCon. So that kind of came up. They let me give me a heads up yesterday. I also try to let all the companies I work for, like if I know something big is coming out a certain week, 
I will say, hey, if somebody else is trying to release something, I'll be like, hey, you might want to spread this out a week just so we don't cannibalize each other. Yeah, well, that's nice. I think that's a, that's a nice professional courtesy, I think. And you might not always get that from every person in the industry. So that's a really nice way to I think, approach Yeah, it. I think it works for everyone because the fans aren't going to want to get you know, nailed twice right. in a week if there's two posters they really want. And then for me, it works because it gives each each print a little bit of time to breathe or each yeah. project. So Yeah, absolutely. So when you are, um, since you've knocked a couple of these these uh, icons off of your list, what's next for you? What are you what are you wanting to get out of uh, your next project or the next property? I have a list, like I said, a wish list of Disney stuff from Cyclops and Mondo that I'm so anxious to get into. Um, so do you, are you, are you, uh, not going to share that list? Maybe give us one thing off of that list. Oh boy. Put it out into the world and, it, and it'll, it'll happen. I believe in it. I've Tom. wanted to do up for a while. Let's put it, let's, let's leave that. That's, a, that's huh. on a short list. When it happens, okay. I don't know, but okay. probably sooner than later. Okay. Um, that's a good one. You heard yeah. it, everybody. Yeah. Tom Whalen wants to do up. So hire him. <laughs> to Adam do Smasher, it. here you go. <laughs> this can be your foray into working with uh, Hero Complex Gallery or any of these other galleries. Um, well, that's exciting. I, I, I was, I'm a little bummed to know that you're not, uh, that you're not going to be at MondoCon because we're going to be hanging out with lots of, of fun people with all of your, uh, with all your. It'll peeps, be less fun now. Yeah. <laughs> it'll. I mean, it'll still be fun. But it would have been more. You know fun. what? Let's just cancel the trip. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys will be just fine. Um, okay. So, what is it that you have coming up that and things that are going on that you are a- allowed to talk about? Stuff that you're excited about, whether it's work or personal or both, mixture of both. Oh man, uh, my wife and I are celebrating 15 years uh, nice. married in a few weeks, so that's pretty exciting. Um, that's huge. That's great. Yeah. We, Does it uh, feel like 15 years? No, it feels like an eye blink. Oh, it's crazy how it's insane how quickly that went. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I, every time that somebody asks me, what are you working on next? I'm, I just go <laughs> blank because I, I, I work so compartmentalized. Like I'll work four yeah. or five days on a job and it's done and then move on. And I have a stack of stuff waiting. I just don't have have it. Everything I'm working on is so much fun. Um, I just don't, I don't, I have it scheduled, but I don't look past the, maybe the job that I'm working on or the one after. Yeah. Um, okay. I have, well, some new, I have a couple new um, projects I'm working on and a couple new posters that are, I'm, I'm pretty excited about coming up. I can't, as always, you know, we can't wait. So let me do this. Let me shift us to uh, final questions. There's only going to be two, so you're getting off getting yeah. off easy this time around. <laughs> um, we'll shift to final questions, um, and I'll start with mine. What is something, so you've been doing this for a long time. How many years have you been in this industry? I would say I, I, I started with Gallery 88 was my, I would say, the official kickoff. So I, that was 2009. Okay, I was doing so, small prints at shows before that, but let's say eight years. So you've been doing it eight years. So you're 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 bridging on veteran status. Yeah. I think yeah. I think we've deemed that like ten years in this industry makes you a veteran and like yeah. a, whatever. So, um, but you're absolutely a pro, and you've been doing it long enough to learn some things. What's something that you something new in the last maybe even six months? I don't want to put necessarily a, a timestamp on it, but what's something new? that you've learned or something that you've had to relearn or, or change your perspective on that you've done one way forever. And you've just recently changed up. Um, and maybe it's just a mindset. Maybe it's not even necessarily an action. Don't but answer the question for I'm him. not, I'm just, he's trying got to, it. I'm trying to <laughs> open it up to him more, Patrick. No, I got it. Um, <laughs> I think I, if I would allow myself six or seven days for a job, and I'd have another job behind that that's six or seven days and another job behind that that's five or six days. I, if I miss the deadline on that first one, and by missing a deadline, I mean miss my deadline. Sure, sure. Uh, if I need an extra day to polish something, I would just, it would drive me crazy because I would, everything behind that would slide. And I've, I've relaxed that on myself and just tell myself, you just have to get that job done 
you ha- it has to be perfect before you yeah. let it go and not worry about the time so much. Um, as a result, those, as you can imagine, if, if I need an extra day on this job and this job and this one I can hit and this one needs an extra day or two, schedules slide. But I, find, I used to be so terrified of telling clients that stuff was going to come in late or not what I had told them it was going to come. But um, I find that people are um, willing to wait if it means that, that everything will be perfect when it's turned in. Or, or you know, perfect is a maybe pompous term, but it'll be, the, the quality will be high. Yeah, it, so. it'll be the vision that you set out to create. Right. Like the, the, the complete vision. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, I, I imagine that's given that you're communicating well with the client. Yes. Yeah. Trying to be like, I need, I'm, I'm going to get back to you. Don't, I didn't forget about you, but you know, it's going to be a little bit later than what we had sure. talked about. I want to make sure someone listening isn't like, Oh, I can just blow all my deadlines and not talk right. to the client and it'll be fine. It'll no, work. No. Out. Hey, Tom does it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Give it yeah. a shot. Um, well, cool. So, uh, my question, um, and I, you know, I've thumbed through your work. I mean, I've 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 gone through your. <laughs> I've thumbed through your work. No, I'm saying that like. I think we're pretty well versed in it. <laughs> okay, but 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 I've never like done a hard comparison, and I would be curious. Uh, I would be curious your answer to this. Where do you identify the biggest shift in your style has been over the last, let's make it eight years, uh, and where do you see? your your style changing moving forward like because everyone you're always iterating you're always growing you're always um you know making the slight changes that being said sometimes if i look at a tom piece from two years ago or three years ago and a tom piece from today they they're obviously your style um and so you with the more critical eye since it's your work where where would you say that that is morphing and shifting that's that's tough because i don't know i think I used to work very limited color palette and now I let myself have a couple more inks and I find that it sometimes when you're on budget, it, you still, you have to stick to a limited pal- color palette. But I think, yeah. uh, adding a couple extra colors, I've let myself kind of, um, take the colors I need instead of like really giving myself a hard stop, especially when uh, it's a client job and I'm not paying for the printing. So, there's, you know, if, if they're willing to pay for the extra ink and it's going to improve the piece, then that's one thing that I've kind of allowed myself to do. Um, as far as style, I think, I think the, um, compositions I've done over the last few years where what I call like a floating Island, um, the Robin Hood poster I did, the, uh, Snow White that I just did where there's, it really doesn't touch the border at all. It's a, it's a framed composition that um, doesn't rely on the borders to define right. it. Um, yeah. I find that challenging to get everything to fit in, in those confines without relying on the border or the edge. Um, that, that was probably a, a big shift in style when, when I started doing that. Um, now that you point that out, I can see it. Like I can see what you're saying and I can see the challenge in it too. Yeah. and Because that, you're that, not that, taking Snow White all the way to the, to the, you're not showing her entire body, but at the same time, you're not using the, the et, you're not using a full bleed to mask it. You you've done some other things compositionally where you've layered her in, and that definitely, if if you're going into it with the mindset of I'm not going to use the border at all, that can be a challenge. Yeah, and for the most part, again, un- unwritten rule with the Disney and Pixar stuff. That's kind of what I try to do um, lately with the feature films. Is is kind of like the same with the Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah. And Peter Pan. Absolutely. So that, that's, that's probably a big, um, it was a style shift that, and it's, it's just like one more tool in the toolbox. That's, that's one yeah. more style I can sell to a client. Absolutely. Very cool. Hey, I, I, I have one more half question. It's a sure. full question, but we'll I want to say half this question. one to Luke. Yeah, this will, this will be Luke's so question. So if it's garbage, this is Luke's question. Yeah, this question. is Luke. So <laughs> what, what do we have to expect? Um, the, who is somebody that you are looking to right now? Who's an artist uh, that maybe isn't being isn't being featured by Mondo or or um, any of the large galleries? You know, Gallery Nineteen Eighty Eight, Hero Complex, um, Dark Hall Mansion. These some of these ones that we know about, Cyclops. Um, but you're 
you are really excited about the work they're putting out um, and that people should check out and start supporting. Okay, three guys. Uh, and you pro- I think you know at least one of them. Uh, Andrew okay. Kolb, which you guys know yeah. pretty well, right? Yeah, I love absolutely. his stuff. And he, I mean, he's, all, these th- all three of these guys are doing uh, really well for themselves, but I just love what they're doing right now. Um, Andrew Kolb, uh, Matt Koffenberg, yeah. and, and Christopher Lee, who yeah. I've, I've gotten to know over the past few years. Um, I know Christopher. I don't know the other guys, but uh, three, those, the three of them are just, they're killing it right now. They're everywhere, and they're, their styles are similar, but they, um, but, but they stand apart. They're, they're not yeah. so similar that they blend together, but they, just, they work in the same vein, and they just every time I see stuff, I'm like, oh, God, it's so good. So given some, given the opportunity, let's say you ha- you have fifty dollars and you're looking at several different pieces from several different artists. You're it sounds like you're going to naturally t- tend to spend that money on a bright and colorful, fun print as opposed to something maybe a little bit more detailed and serious. Based on those three artists, yeah, maybe I just brought them up because they're like I said in the same vein. Um, maybe that's another whole. That's a fourth question, Andrew. I, you know, what? I spend $50. Well, well, it's, <laughs> Tom said right now that $50 goes to his wedding anniversary. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has no extra money. Tom, right. Tom's That's wife reserved. said that those, those extra. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Well then uh, we'll stop asking more questions than we said we would ask. And we'll give you an opportunity to tell everybody where they can find you. They can support what you're doing. They can follow you, um, give you money, all that jazz. Okay, uh, strongstuff.net is my website. Uh, Twitter is strongstufftom, and Instagram is strongstuff. It's as simple Great. as that, people. Yeah. And just look on the internet. Uh, I'm sh- like, just click it, Tom Whalen, and at, at any given week, something new will be popping up, and you can buy it. <laughs> um, be on the lookout for if you're so if you're listening to this, you're, you've likely already missed out on Sesame Street, but um, but you can pick up uh, the MondoCon piece, uh, the uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs piece at MondoCon in just a couple of days. Uh, if you're going to be out here, um, and that's that's the only poster I have at MondoCon, but we'll leave it at that. There there's there's should be some other goodies at MondoCon too. Man, okay. How about that? Well. What a way to leave that one. <laughs> um, on that exciting note, you can find M of One Podcast on uh, M of One Podcast.com. You can find show notes and links to all this stuff. If you're watching this on YouTube, just look below. Um, all of those links are there, uh, and you can find that. Then subscribe. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. It helps us out tremendously. Leave a comment. Uh, share the video. Like the video. Share the, the podcast. Share the episodes. Sub- uh, after you subscribed, rate and review. It helps us out so so much it doesn't cost you any money cost you very little time um but uh it helps us out so so much and what we're on social media yeah yeah all At over M the one podcast Just everywhere that. uh patreon you can support us become a patron of the show uh, help us continue doing what we do and and uh you know make cool swag and talk to cool artists and that kind of stuff and that's just uh, patreon.com forward slash M of one podcast. Yeah. And if you are going to be out at Mondo con, uh, we will be there as well. So we're going to do a meetup in Austin. Um, and so come out and find us, just stay tuned to our website and to our social media for information on that. Um, we're going to be missing Tom greatly. Maybe we'll get everybody together. We'll call him on the phone in the middle of the night and uh, tell him how much we're, we're missing him, but uh, it's going to be a great time. There's one other thing, which is crop. So pop-up crop is tomorrow. If you are registered for Pop-Up Crop, we are doing Hot Seats. And uh, we'll post that link on our social media. It'll be in the show notes of this episode. But uh, Pop-Up Crop is sold out. But if you're already registered, you can sign up to uh, jump in the hot seat and talk to us for a few minutes. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. All right, so for now, we're going to get out of here, though. I'm Andrew. I'm Patrick. I'm Tom. And for Luke, peace out. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) 